like, probably the aloneness is maybe the lot, one of the hardest aspects of uh, mental illness. There's often that point where if someone's like the most vulnerable and then the most alone, and it's almost like an energetic thing. Like a lot of people seem to abandon them alone mm. at that point. And uh, what, what are some of your comments on that? Maybe dealing with the aloneness. Um, dealing with the isolation is probably the toughest thing um, actually because um, as human beings you know naturally we are social creatures you know we like being around people generally you know we like being around people um, and we like talking but then there comes a stage when you're dealing with um, really difficult thoughts and feelings when you don't enjoy that anymore um, because you're scared, you're scared of what people will think of you if you really do speak your mind and reveal what's going on. Um, and people then turn away from you, they don't understand, you know. Um, when you're dealing with mental illness, sometimes you do need space, you do need to be alone. And yeah, people don't understand that, you know, people don't get that. Uh, it's very different, me saying, um, uh, well, I can't be around you because um, I don't know. I've uh, got a headache. Sometimes I say, my sense of friends, uh, you know, can I not see you tonight? Because struggling with anxiety, and people don't get it. People don't get it because it's something you can't see, uh, or they can't identify with it. And um, I think that's why there's such isolation when it comes to mental illness, and it's such a shame because. Um, we all go through these experiences, you know, in different degrees, but we all go through them. Um, so we can all relate, we just... It's the fear, it's the fear that shuts everyone off and, and, and uh, causes such isolation, I think. What about in terms of like, aloneness and then meditation and the, like, the doorway into the inner world? Uh, mindfulness, but then even like sort of... D deeper states of consciousness. How, how does that benefit um, mental mental uh, recovery from mental illness? Mental health? Well, I think um, mindfulness is being um, used and recognised more and more and more in mental health now, um, and Nice recommends it for, for for different conditions. And I think it's there's more and more research around it. I mean, and essentially, it's. It's something that I think we are all. Um, it's something that we all sort of quite naturally do, and and that's sort of being kind of very quiet and taking time out and taking taking some space um, to kind of detach yourself from your thoughts, um, because often we kind of get caught up in a kind of negative spiral of thoughts, and and the emotions that go with those thoughts, and get totally consumed by that. Um, and actually if you're able to step back and, and see them for what they are, which is just thoughts, uh, you, can, you can get a sense of peace and a sense of wholeness uh, and it just allows you basically to, to deal with the things that happen in life uh, in a healthier way because those things will happen regardless. That is what life is um, and you can either choose to see that as hardship and suffer with that or you can uh, choose to see that as an opportunity to, to learn and grow um, and in order to kind of do the latter I think you need to be able to have that space and that time out and people use mindfulness doesn't necessarily mean meditation mindfulness is just being very present uh, and um, there are various techniques that you can learn to do that and I think all of us benefit from it regardless of whether we te have a sort of mental health diagnosis or whether we whether we don't and uh, for me personally, I think we need to be teaching that to our children in schools as a tool to live your life in a healthy way um, and ultimately be sort of happy in inverted commas. Um, so yeah, I think mindfulness is really important. It's, it's crucial actually. A lot of people experience mental uh, illness, talk about issues relating to spirituality and sometimes quite extreme ideas and, and, and religion and, but, and often these are just discarded or 
maybe not, not understood or even like sort of seen as a like a parody or something, seen seen as a joke. What are some of your thoughts on that? And what about some of the information that they're accessing? I think it's really important to listen to people when they're experiencing some kind of mental health problem or distress. Um, because and, and I think that goes back to um, the idea that we need to see people as individuals um, and, a, and a sense of individualised care because people experience all kinds of different things. We're individuals, we're all on journeys, we're all experiencing the world uh, in different ways. Um, and it's about not being too quick to judge and kind of put people into boxes and to kind of pathologise certain experiences. These are all human experiences uh, and they need to be um, treated with respect and listened to and, um, and, and actually it's an opportunity for, for us all to learn. It's not just about the person that's experiencing, it's the, the people that are around them and even the healthcare professionals that are around them. Um, I think if we're too quick to classify people and put people into to boxes, um, that's just not helpful for anyone really.